Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. So these are some other water culvers I have as part of a breeding project. Hello. Oh, I see a little snoot. Here you go. Come on. Water culprits are, are somewhat relaxed. Now, I just cleaned their substrate and uh, believe me, they were not happy about being uh, uh, taken out and put into a tub. As a matter of fact, if you look at my boot, uh, uh, that's the remains of an explosion of urate and other fecal matter that got he <laughs> flung around the room. So, while he has his mouth full, I'm going to clean his water bowl. So I'm going to shut this and we're going to stop filming and I'm going to clean the water bowl and come back and replace it. All right, cleaned up the water dish. Unfortunately, he's, or she's, I think this is a she's, pulled the mouse under there to eat it. They would, they would, again, like thud, eat until they exploded, but uh, I just give them one, one of those a week um, because they're not really that active. So now we'll do number four. Oh. Hello. Hello. What? You sort of screwed up. Okay, so you got it from the back end now. So you'll have to figure that out on your own. Huh? How's your water? Is it reasonably clean? Yeah, I think so. We're just going to dump a little bit in there for some humidity. Although the we try to keep the room in a constant uh, temperature and humidity. It's a little uh, difficult in the winter. Um, This is one of our smooth death adders. Yes, never take your eyes off of the snake while doing anything. Water culvers are notoriously slow eaters. They're not vacuum cleaners. They'll just sort of grab it, hold it, and sit there for, oh God, I can come back 30 minutes later and they'll still be sitting there with it in their <laughs> mouth. They're not like Mr. Boomslang or Mr. Brown that just suck it down. So let's shut this so it goes ahead and eats. And now we'll do five so I have four or five I have six ringed water cobras now this one uh, I sold off to somebody and it came back because they said it was too aggressive and yeah, this one can be a problem it can be quite snappy come on 
sometimes it will, it's quite shy, it will just, uh, it will just, uh, if I leave it here, it will take it, and it almost always eats, it's just very shy. And this one is the sibling uh, to the other three that you just saw, and you can see that the other, other two, unless, unless I pick them up to, uh, to take them out of the cage to clean it, they're absolutely uh, perfectly okay to work with. Uh, you can see where this this one sort of dug tunnels through its substrate under its water dish. So we'll just empty that in there. You can uh, just kick that closed or use the hook to close it, but I don't think it's coming out. Well, you'll know if it does because I'll probably let out a shriek. Nothing to be seen. <laughs> yep. Oh well, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Unlike number five, uh, water culprit number one here as it's known. Uh, I don't necessarily give all the snakes names. Everybody you know, gets a catalog number uh, here. Uh, but this one is also related to those four that you just saw. They're not related to Thud. Um, and this one is a little bit more uh, interested and <laughs> it's more Thud-like actually. <laughs> Uh, it's very interested in food and really uh, doesn't care much about anything other than getting something to eat. Now, I'm going to annoy it because I need to open this glass just enough so I can get its water dish out. This guy eats a little faster than Thud. Now the locks are on the cage, of course, not to keep people out. It's just to keep the snakes in. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of important. Yes, that's very important considering the chaos uh, that occurred when the dwarf male water cobra managed to push the glass open and escape, liberating another snake that we certainly didn't <laughs> want out in the house that was a lot more difficult to find. Mr. Russell Viper there, enjoying his, uh, his rat.
is the only uh, one Russell Viper that I have that I I routinely give rats to because the other ones can't seem to consume it properly and it gets left in the cage so he gets rats the others get mice he's sort of I hate to use friendly in the same sentence as the Russell's Viper but he seems to be the uh, more interested in uh, in my presence in the room because he knows I bring him treats and usually I don't like to go into their cages very much um, I change the water dish at the same time that I feed them this way uh, their mouth is full when I do that and I overflow the water dish a little bit so they get some humidity these are from a dry area in Pakistan so I try not to uh, I don't put misters in the cage, um, so once a week I overflow their water dish so they have some humidity. We try to keep the room humidity about 50% in the winter, which is difficult. Uh, uh, right now during the summer it's 73%, so this is quite okay. So are we gonna are we gonna do a fang shot? Look at that. Bad, bad enough having those stuck in your hand or your finger. It's what they carry that's the really bad part. Uh, they make your blood incoagulable after it makes your blood coagulate like crazy. And then you have swelling and necrosis. And the antivenin I have is for, well, is made primarily for Ty Russell's vipers. Uh, um, so it, the antivenin is not really specific to Pakistani or Indian Russell's vipers, uh, uh, which means that you have to give more in order to uh, uh, to counteract their uh, their venom. Okay, dude, are you having trouble snaking? Is that your, that your issue? He'll figure it out eventually, but uh, uh, as usual, most of our snakes have some sort of uh, issue. Um, which actually makes them very interesting because they're amusing to watch sometimes but at the same time it can be frustrating because they get frustrated themselves and give up and leave the morsel uneaten but you know he hasn't done that he'll figure it out where the mouth is uh, eventually it's just that they sort of get stuck going from one direction and don't want to uh, go all the way around to the other side to, even if they have to do it right. Yeah, that's the nose. That's where you want to eat from. There we go. My. Alright, so now he's working his mandibles to get everything lined up to go down the chute. And tomorrow I'll do some spot cleaning in his cage and get those old cow pies out of there. The snakes generally get their substrate totally changed out once a quarter. Uh, and we try to spot clean uh, in between. I don't, I don't believe that you should take your snake out of its habitat once a week to clean the cage because uh, they don't like to be handled. Um, they don't like to go get thrown into a bin or a bucket. Uh, plus, you risk a bite on a weekly basis. Uh, we have a more hands-off approach, and and we clean and replace the substrate once a quarter, uh, and we clean as as we go, so to speak. So we'll let him uh, finish swallowing that. And we'll move on to some other critters that are looking for food.